welcome to another episode of junk journal snacks <laughs> in the meantime i can just roll my journal around because of how round and chubby it has become how cute is that <laughs> In case this is the first time you're tuning into my snacks, this is a beautiful journal that I bought from Nadia. I will link her Instagram for you below in case you want to check out her other journals. She makes absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous junk journals. Let's watch her explode while I open her up. <laughs> it's insane, but I love it. So I decided now I want to start working from the beginning to fill up pages where I haven't done anything yet, which there are plenty of. There we go. There's our first blank page next to this cute little booklet. Wow, this was, I think, one of my first episodes, actually. Did I put a date somewhere? I guess not. A lot of times I just forget to add a date. Yeah, totally forgot to add a date on this one. Some of them have dates, some of them don't. Okay, I need to prop this up because as you can see, this is quite challenging to handle. So how do you start a junk journal page? Maybe you feel overwhelmed, you have so much stuff, but you don't know how to actually start a page. So let me share my process with you. When I look at my desk, I have a bunch of stuff out and I'm going to see what sparks joy in me at the moment. One thing which I'm dying to use is this beautiful piece. I bought a big sheet of this paper from a secondhand store and I asked them what this actually is and they said they bought it from a retired print shop. So these must have been some kind of test prints. They were on huge sheets and you can probably see this paper is, I don't know what they've done to it. It seems like they've either oiled or waxed it. Kind of feels like probably what freezer paper feels like. We don't really have that here, but I could imagine freezer paper feels something like this and i think it's super cool this seems to be a dictionary french german and i want to do something with this so i have it here on my page and i want to see how can i use this what could i do with it so obviously you can always make a pocket that's really easy and simple i could make a tuck spot i could make a sideways tuck spot how about i make a belly band a, a wide belly band because i want to see some of this i might cover some of this up so let's first tear a piece off this here already has a torn edge so let's tear another edge i'm tearing it so that it just peeks out on the top and the bottom of my journal page because i think that's cute Okay, so the first step is done. The biggest difficulty is to just start. So now I have a start. I already know I'm making a belly band and I have this beautiful paper. So what else do I have to make this more interesting? So I'm looking around my desk again to search for something that might fit together with this, which is quite easy because I have neutral tones here and just about anything fits with that. I have this beautiful piece of fabric here, which is by Tim Holtz. I'm not sure what it's called. I was gifted this by Honey, but I think this is absolutely gorgeous together. So why don't I tear off a piece and put that in the middle of my belly band so that I have some of the page peeking out on the right and the left side. So I'm going to take my fabric scissors this seems like it would make the perfect strip right here with these numbers. I don't mind again if it's longer actually than, than the piece of paper. This makes me happy already just like that. And I have no idea what I'm going to put inside this belly band, but that's something to worry about later. So what else do I want to do? Why don't I see what it would look like if I would crumple this up? Because it's very smooth and I want to add some more interest to it, although it is absolutely beautiful on its own. And since I don't think it will take color very well because of the waxy surface, let's try adding some interest in another way by crumpling it up, for example. And 
and already it has a lot more interest in my opinion okay looking good so what else can we do we could add something else on top even though this five is beautiful but i still want to add something else so what else do i have that might work i have these tim holtz pieces i've had them for a long time i don't use them enough this is the perfect opportunity to find something they are from the urban layers I will link these below for you in the description box. Maybe there's a piece here that we could add on top here. I'm thinking in order for it to really stand out, it needs to be either something that has a completely different color and or something that is quite large to make an impact on this page. A round element I think would be super cool. So let's take out some of the round elements and see what we would like. So I'm going to audition these one by one. This is kind of cool already right there. I like that one. I'll keep that up there. This one gets, it would be okay, but I feel like it's getting a little bit lost here. Oh, this is like a compass. I like that one. It has a hole in the middle. It's definitely big enough to make an impact. This gives us room to add something else on top because you know, this journal just isn't chunky enough yet. <laughs> so I want to keep that as an option. This is a bit too much. This would also be cool. Hmm? I'm gonna keep this in mind. This speedometer is cool, but a little bit too small. I think same thing with this retro phone dial, although actually it looks awesome. Yeah, I think I want something bigger. I think I've set my mind on something bigger now. This is a bit too much as well. So it's down to these three. There's this one. Mm, I think I want to go with something big. So either this one or this one. With this one, I'm almost thinking it's, is it too many numbers? We have numbers here, we have numbers here. And then we have this one. Let's see what this one looks like if we add something else on top. So what could that be? I picked out some metal pieces that might work. Mostly round shapes, but not all. So again, let's just see what we like. This is kind of nice. We have a butterfly. I got these locally from Action. Some of them were also in Happy Mails. Ooh, with a butterfly. My goodness, butterflies always look amazing. We have this daisy here. They're all cute. How am I supposed to decide? <laughs> okay, we'll see if something specifically seems like it's the perfect piece. Oh my goodness. How gorgeous is this? Uh, that's a bit too much it's too delicate i think together with all of this okay so at least there's one that i know i'm not taking <laughs> this is beautiful but i think again it's too delicate i think this design needs something a little bit more bold there's another smaller butterfly gorgeous let me have this also cute but maybe a bit small and there's this one beautiful and then, I don't know, I just thought I might try a key. The key has holes up there and it's quite flat, which is nice. Could we use this as like a hand, like, like a clock hand, even though this is not a clock? Maybe I can find another one in small so that this could be the large hand and then we also have a small hand. Ta found one, we would put these together here. They're not as good as some of the other options, I think. Let's revisit some of these. Gorgeous. Still gorgeous. <laughs> it's not helping. This one here does seem like it's absolutely made for it, but at the same time, I'm thinking it's too perfect. I don't know if that makes any sense, but this is just too perfect for me. <laughs> the daisy. Mm, maybe too solid. And we have this square. What I don't like about the square is that it's covering the south, north, west and east leaves the two butterflies it's 
So it's either the big one, gorgeous, gorgeous, or the small one. Oh, now I'm gonna go with the big one. Another decision made, yay. This compass is definitely looking too new and shiny. So I'm going to grunge it up using some sandpaper. I especially went around the edges, so that's looking a lot better. Then I want to add some Distress Oxide. I need to concentrate saying this because I keep saying braid for lap. <laughs> and uh, a lot of you are commenting on that. <laughs> I'm really not doing it on purpose. I don't know why I keep doing that. Frayed burlap. Just say it slow. <laughs> In either case, no matter how I say it, it's just a gorgeous color. And let's see if we can get a reaction if we spritz a little bit of water on it. Let's see if it oxidizes. Never know how it's going to react on which material. It's kind of like being a little scientist. <laughs> All the things we get to experience in our junk journals, it's amazing. Okay, let's dab it off. Oh my goodness, I am so in love. Check it out, gorgissimo. <laughs> okay, let's see what the pieces look like together and see if we need to add anything else. Maybe we add something else under the butterfly, like either cheesecloth or some other kind of material. So I have my lace scrap jar here, but I also have some other materials. Mm, the green might not be so great. This is a cheesecloth dyed with forest moss, distress oxide. This might be too green. It would actually go. I'll keep it in mind. What about a piece of this? Side? Okay, let's check some of our lace scraps. I have this little flower here. Uh, nope. I mean, the color would be beautiful. I can manage to tear out a piece that would work. That's an option. This, I think, would be way too big, although I could always cut the outer edge off. No, it's too bulky. Okay, I think these laces are all a bit bulky so either the green or the yellow i really wasn't thinking that the green would fit so let's cut a piece and see how a small piece would look it's not bad at all let's reconsider this one what kind of a piece would that have to be to work underneath that butterfly I think it needs to be very tattered and frayed. Mm, it's too solid. I like how delicate and thin the cheesecloth is. I wish I had that in this beautiful yellow. Just because we don't have any doesn't mean we can't make some. Yeah, I have another beautiful piece here in white. I'm just going to use my Wild Honey Distress Stain. I could also very simply do this with watercolor or anything water soluble for that matter. This is just the easiest for me. Add some water. I like wearing gloves using, using these stains and oxides because they really, really stain your hands. Now that is a beautiful yellow. So I just need to dry that. Okay, so this is dry now. So let me cut a piece. Now, strangely, I think it's too matchy matchy. <laughs> now I actually think I like the green better. Yeah, I'll go with the green. Very unexpected. 
See, I couldn't make that decision until I tried this one. So I have this beautiful cheesecloth now for another project. I could just glue these together, but I think I want some stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe take a zigzag stitch and just stitch these two together. Although, of course, you could also just stitch or glue up here and down here to make a double belly band. But I don't want to overdo it in this journal. <laughs> I think this is already bad enough bulk wise. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch these two on top of each other. So I just added some really messy zigzag stitching and now I'm going to glue on these other pieces using textile glue. Coming back to my blank page, I want to have some interest also on the two sides that we'll be showing once we put the belly band on. And I'm simply going to use my current favorite mask of all times, which is by Studio Light. This is a Dutch company, by the way, I believe. And it has these beautiful numbers. And it's called SLGR Mask 16. And I will link this for you below. And I'm going to say it slowly. I'm using Distress Oxide Frayed Burlap. <laughs> Let's see if that's enough. Yeah, that's far enough. Oh, so gorgeous. Should we just flip it? And why not add some water to that as well to see the beautiful oxidizing effect. Let's see how it looks on coffee dyed paper. Maybe it won't be visible. Oh, it's kind of messing up the stencil, isn't it? Wasn't thinking about that, but it's okay. It'll be nice and grungy. <laughs> always enjoy unexpected effects. Not always, actually. But that's the way to gain new knowledge about what works and what doesn't. It's interesting. <laughs> I'll just quickly try this. So it looks even more grungy. And I'm fine with that. So let's put our belly band there. Oh, yes, I like it. So now let's add some textile glue. I don't know why I'm adding textile glue, by the way. I'm gluing paper to paper. <laughs> but this is the glue that's handy right now. So that's what it's going to be. We'll see if this paper actually holds down with glue. Could always hand stitch it, I guess. I want a little more contrast, so obviously I'm going to add some black splatters. Well, maybe not obvious to you, but obvious to me. <laughs> Sorry. This is just very, very watered down acrylic black paint. So let's see if I can do some very small, sort of small <laughs> splatters here. Okay, stop. So that's what they look like once they are dry loving the grunge and now i should think about what to actually add to the belly band i mean not that it's absolutely necessary to put something in there now but why not oh actually this glue is holding quite well so that's amazing okay let me see what i can find on google i always enjoy searching for either quotes or sentiments or lyrics or poems or something that have to do with the current page i'm working on so i found a poem which is called the room of ancient keys maybe at first glance it doesn't seem like really it's that meaningful for this page but i'm going to use this as inspiration and make something different out of this so let me read you this poem first so it's by elena mikalkova grandma once gave me a tip during difficult times you move forward in small steps do what you have to do but little by little don't think about the future, not even what might happen tomorrow. Wash the dishes, take off the dust, write a letter, make some soup. Do you see? You're moving forward step by step. Take a step and stop. Get some rest. Compliment yourself. Take another step, then another one. You won't notice, but your steps will grow bigger and bigger. And time will come when you can think about the future without crying. Based on this, I'm going to write something that is a little closer to what this page actually is. 
So I wrote something in a Word document and printed it out on this very grungy coffee dyed paper. If you are into the grunge, you can find these kind of papers linked below. This is an original. And I know it's a little bit hard to read because there's some pretty dark spots here, but I will read you what I wrote. How I approach junk journaling. Move forward in tiny steps. Take a piece of something near you that sparks joy. Don't think about the finished page. Place your piece on your page and play with it. Move it this way and that way. Fold it perhaps or tear it in two. Crumple it up. Find another piece that looks good with the first piece. How can they fit together on the page? You're moving forward step by step. Compliment yourself. Take another step. Then another one. You won't notice, but your page will tell you what it needs. You will grow bolder and before you know it, you will have a beautiful journal page. Repeat regularly and soon you will feel confident. So I want to put this underneath my belly band. So what I'm simply going to do is tear around this. Believe it or not, I sometimes feel overwhelmed filming these videos because sometimes I think, oh no, what if I don't have another idea? You know, I want to do something that's inspiring for you. And then thinking about having to have a finished page almost stops me filming. So what I do is I just take my journal and I do exactly what I wrote here. I just look around me and exactly what I just did on this page. I see what sparks joy. I play around with it. I see how I could add it to the page. I see what I combine it with and slowly it just builds up, you know, and in the end before you realize it, because usually then you're in such a flow, you're like, oh my goodness, I have a finished journaling page and most likely you're going to be happy with it because you created it being in this flow without actually thinking so much ahead and just enjoying the process of just thinking always one step at a time. Maybe you can let me know in the comments below whether this approach makes sense to you. If you have tried it out yourself or is that, if that is how you work anyway, or if you still feel completely stuck and, and you just can't get yourself to start, even though you enjoy watching these kind of videos. Going to ink up the edges with frayed burlap. I hope you're not sad that I'm saying it correctly now, but no worries. I'm sure in the next video, I'll mess it up again. <laughs> Always do the back side as well. We don't want a half finished piece. Maybe I will add some more thoughts about this process later on. And now we can add it in here. And that's today's page. Thanks so much. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.